You might have noticed something funny when you were doing your homework in video number 12. Let's say that you have a player. Player has position X, position Y. I'm also going to create a struct called movement. Create a function that takes in the player as the argument and move the player something like P position X increase it by one. I'm also going to increase y position by one. When you're starting out, you might think that if I do something like this, I'm going to say I have the player. I also have some sort of a movement scheme. If I say movement, move player, you might think that this line is going to change the position of x and y for this player. Let me initialize this. Player x is 0, player x is 0 by default. Let's try debugging this. I'm going to put a breakpoint right here, run the debugger. Okay, I'm going to put in player. We haven't initialized the values yet. I'm going to press F10 twice. Okay, x and y are both 0. I'm going to put another breakpoint inside the function. Press continue. Okay, we're here now. I'm going to press F10 again twice. We ran the function, but the values are still 0. This is happening because this player only exists within the scope of this function. Let's try debugging this again. Debugger. Instead of just saying player, I'm going to say address of the player. Okay, we get our address. I'm going to click on continue. And for the function, I'm going to say address of P. And you notice that these are two different addresses. Let me get the memory window. I'm going to get two. Memory two. And I'm going to put in the address for the player. 0x, 003a, f, a, 08. And for our function, 0x, 003a, f, 924. Notice what happens when I press F10. I'm going to press it twice. Let me change this to fours. You'll notice that we have two different addresses for two different players, and we've only changed values in one of them. This is what we call pass by value. We're not passing the player, we're passing the copy of the player and putting that in another address. So let's think of another way. I'm going to stop debugging. And here, instead of passing by value, I'm going to say pass the address of the player. I'm going to run the debugger again. Okay, let's look at the address of the player. Right, we see it both here and here. I'm going to click on continue. We're inside a function now. And I'm going to say address of P. And now we get the same address for P inside the function as well as our player. So I'm going to press F10 again. I'm going to press it twice. Since we're using the same address for the player inside the function, whatever changes that we make to that address is of course going to be applied to our player. So let me set another breakpoint here at the end. Press continue again. And after going through the function, we see that the player's position x and y is now 1. This is really important before you start writing any kind of function, so make sure that you understand this. You can also read the book. Part 1, Chapter 3, References. Also try Googling. You're going to see a bunch of results on this. And most importantly, try debugging this yourself and understand what's going on in your memory. So for your homework, try using this knowledge for what you did in video number 12 and try improving your code. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.